Let's look at how we can use a node that is new to Houdini 21 to take a texture that is not tiling and make it tileable with just a couple of nodes. So as always, this project file will be available on Patreon. If you'd like to grab it, you can grab it on there. I'm also going to make this a, an HDA, what I'm going to show you, and that's going to be available as part of this free Humats release. There are a few nodes that are available already. This is on Gumroad. The link will be in the description. But right now, it's some of the stuff that I've used inside of COPS quite a bit. So I've got SDF setup and the stop setup, which are just some recipes that drop down some different things. Um, that we use quite a bit inside of COPS. I've got a time shift node, which is super useful and not available inside of the default COPS. You have to build it all yourself. And uh, with the new flow solvers and the reaction diffusion stuff, super, super useful. So definitely want to grab that. But there's also true shade tiles and the UV grid, which are things that I've shown off before. So let's go ahead and look at how we can create this tiling setup ourselves. And we'll drop down a copnet, dive inside. And I just want to say thank you to Alex from Side Effects. He's actually the one that showed off this, and I just wanted to share it with everyone. I wasn't like on, you know, super public spot. So I wanted to show it off to as many people as we can. So let's drop down a fractal noise. And we need to just reset our viewport here, get that view back. And the first thing that we need to do is make something that isn't tileable. So with this fractal noise, we can break the tiling just by changing this tile size here. And I'm also going to show how we can bring in some noises from SOPs that are not available inside of COPS and use this method to make sure that they tile as well. So let's start off with this, though, just show the method. So we'll take this fractal noise. Let's drop down a slope direction, wire in our noise into the height. And then we also need to uncheck this read pixels outside of image. If you don't do that, it's going to break the tiling. Then let's use the flow project non-divergent multigrid, which is what powers the new flow solver in 21 as well. So we're going to take that and we can take a look at this and set this to pressure to view our output. And you can see it's kind of working, but we need to do a couple things to really make it work nicely. First of all, let's take this multi-grid iterations, set that up to 10, and then let's change this to be periodic for both of these. And now you can see that our tiling has cleaned up quite a bit. And we can take an equalize now and wire the pressure into the source. And we get our nice tiling texture. So if I look at what we started with versus what we have now, those nice uh, lines that are showing up here that are breaking our tiling have now disappeared. So it works pretty well in most cases. You can also play around with the angle here. Depending on what you set it to, you may get errors like this where it doesn't work real well. But as you start to approach like negative 180 or positive 180, you get different looks as to what the noise is versus like zero. And you can get some, some different results using that. So let's take some noises from SOPs and bring that in. So we're going to do a SOP geometry. Let's dive inside. I'm going to unpin my viewport here. Let's drop down a height field node because the nodes inside of COPS, if you don't know, most of them, not all of them inside of 21 now, are like this because inside of 21 it's really moved to a full like 3D integration. So we have things like the new volumes and VDBs inside of COPS. Um, but anything that has like these mono outputs, so like this fractal noise or like the end of this equalize, this is going to be a 2D height field once it's brought inside of SOPS. So we can generate this ourselves by setting a height field down, set it to the X, Y, and then I can come to the size and set it to be a two by two. So that it's going to be the same size as our image plane inside of COPS. Then we need to set this division mode to by axis, and this is going to control the resolution of our output image, basically. So let's set this to 1024. And then we can go straight to a volume VOP, but I'm going to output a few different layers. So I would need to make those layers so that we can work on those inside of the volume VOP. I'm going to do a height field copy layer. I'm going to copy that mask layer to mask one. And then I'm going to create another one, call it mask two. You can call these whatever you want, but I'm just going to use mask one and mask two to make it easy. 
and then we'll do a volume fop. Jump inside here. I'm going to go ahead and just cut that wire. We don't need it. Let's drop down a bind export. Let's call this one mask. We'll wire a second one through. Call this one mask one. And then a third called mask two. And then we can use the new, I guess they're no longer new, but in Houdini, I think 20 they were released, the cloud noises, which are like Fibratus. Take a look at this one, wire in a position, wire that into our mask. If I play around with our element size here, this is actually one of the ones that I think doesn't work super well with this method. But we can play around with all this different stuff and get some different looks here. Let's leave it like that for now. And we also have Flocus. Wire in our position again. And let's just wire this into the mask for now. And let's come in here. I'm going to change the element size around. And let's come in, add some wispy details and whirly details maybe. You know, you can play around with these all you want. And then let's drop down a Vibratus. I think that's the one that I missed. Nope. Flocus, Vibratus. What's the third one? They're under patterns. Fractus, sorry. And then we can wire in our position here as well. And then wire that back into the mask just so we can preview it easily. Let's play around with our element size and everything. Into the ability details. Let's maybe up these and, and we'll leave that kind of in the middle like that. Now let's wire these into our mask inputs. And I would recommend that you don't get too comfortable with what they look like just in this preview because once you bring them back into the to cops, they do look a little bit different. So we'll look at that here in a moment. But let's do a Geo2 layer. And we can click this set imports from geometry. And now if we look at our different layers, we can look at mask. And we see that we have our noises being brought in. And actually, if I jump back in here and come to our height field, if I look at this, we can see that we have these grid samples. If I set this to something super low, like 30, you can see how blurry it gets. That's just the resolution. So you want to make sure that it's nice and crisp. We'll set it to like 1024, 2048, just to give it a nice crisp look. And then we can wire this into our inputs here. And if I look at our equalize, we get some kind of like distortion going on here. We need to change around our equalize. So maybe like negative 0.75. You can kind of mess with this and get something a little bit closer to what you have here. So you want to basically start where you start to see these artifacts and work your way backwards. So something like negative 0.15 gets you a decent result. And then we can pen this and just jump back in to our volume VOP and come back to this vibratus. And you can mess around with these settings here as well and get some different some different looks. So again, you'd have to you have to kind of play with it to to make it work. You do sometimes get these errors, which I don't really know exactly why those happen or how to fix them, but uh other than just like changing your settings up. So just keep that in mind. I haven't been able to figure out kind of what's causing them, but you can play around with it and get some different results. Let's jump over to one of the other ones. We'll do this mask one into the height here. And then you see what we have on our output. And then we can come in here as well. Let's start with negative one. And we get something a little bit closer to kind of what we start with. So you can see that we get this nice cloud noise and we have this tiling really nicely as well. And then we can do that same for the mask input three and we get a different look here. So again, let's look at mask two. So again, our tiling's broken. And then we come to here and it works a lot better. We can drop this down and get a little bit closer to what our output looked like. And we get some nice cloud noises inside of SOPs or inside of COPS um, from SOPs that are not actually available inside of COPS by default. 
So like I said, you can package this all up and make an HDA, HDA out of it yourself, or you can just download it from the free Humass release. Like I said, there's a couple of other tools in here that are really nice, specifically that time shift node. If I just look at that real quick, if I use something like the, the flow node, if we take that, wire that into a, let's do a mono to RGB, so we don't have to worry about any of the alpha. And if I look at this, I bring a time shift node in now, which is available, like I said, for free in that who matched release. You can delete that channel, set this to be like frame 75 or something. Let's feed this mono into our temperature as well. And we can look at our time shift. We get this really cool, you know, effect going on here. So we can mess around with this as well, change the different frame that's on, set it to whatever we want and get some nice results here. And everything's all tileable since we've turned it into a, you know, tileable texture and everything. So that is how we can take some inputs and make them tileable. Now it does only work on mono channels. You can't do this with, um, te with the like RGB textures, it doesn't work as well. So just keep in mind, you get kind of limited on what you can do with this method, but it does seem to work pretty well with certain things. So just give it a shot. Not gonna be perfect for everything, but for some things it might work pretty well. Anyways, hopefully this has helped you out. Thank you guys for watching and have a good day.